Hey, it's Mac. I'm back with another transparent watercolor. I've got a female common red pole in the snowy scene. Uh, this is a little painting. It's only 10 by 7 inches, um, but it was a lot of fun to work on. I got photos for this um, in our backyard from the kitchen window. So I started the painting by pre-wetting my paper. Um, I'll pre-wet backgrounds if I want a super smooth gradient. And so I did a, a wash from pink to purple, and then I hit that with the hair dryer. After it was dried, I decided I needed a little bit darker, so I uh, made sure I still had enough paint mixed. And then I went about re-wetting the paper and putting another layer of that pinky purple wash in the background. And then I sucked off the extra paint with a napkin and then while the that background was still really wet I went in with some browns to create some blurry branches for the background. In doing a lot of these paintings I like to have my foreground elements, a middle ground and then a background um, further back and so I wanted to have parts of this crisp and focused and other parts that were kind of fuzzy and out of focus and lacked a lot of definition and detail. So I did the blurry parts while the paper was wet and then I came in with a uh, number six brush and started putting in some other branches that were closer to the viewer that were sharper and those were going on dry paper. And I also put in a little bit of indication of shadow um, for those branches. I didn't want a lot of detail because these are background elements. I want these to kind of fade off and although they look a little prominent now, once they were done, they, they faded pretty well into the background. So then I peeled off the frisket and then using tracing paper and a folding bone I transferred the rest of the uh, pencil sketch to the paper. And then I went about putting in all the lightest local colors of the branches and the bird and the little lichens on it. Most of this was done with a really sharp number six round brush. My basic approach here is glazing, just getting slowly darker colors and uh, doing little layers that build up and lay on top of each other that ends up building some convincing textures with time. In this painting, I had a three-quarter view of the bird's face, so you kind of see the bill coming out towards you, the beak. And I often don't use that point of view, although the bird's engaging you and looking you kind of in the eye. Uh, sometimes if you do that, it makes the beak look shorter, especially if you're doing herons and things with long beaks, that if, they, if you have them looking off to the, the side or looking toward the camera, it makes the beak look small and fatter. And so it, it can be a little misleading as far as uh, what the birds look like so I often don't do that but in this case I thought it just looked really neat the way the bird kind of was just looking at the viewer instead of kind of looking off to the side you can see my photo reference on the left and in my photos, I had a very gray-brown kind of background, and that worked well as a, a kind of monochromatic, um, you know, painting, and it made for an interesting image. But I was afraid it would look a little too drab and dreary if I had this totally lacking any, you know, nice color in the background, and I wanted a little bit more... Uh, warm and engaging view of, of winter. So I pushed the colors instead of being that dreary gray white color, I pushed it to this purple and pink, which I thought would have the, the feel of winter without having the oppressive white <laughs> all over the background. That kind of gray color can kind of suck the life out of things. And I don't know, I thought it would just be a, a departure from the original and, and be a good way to uh, reinvent the photo a little bit and have it inject some color into the scene. 
to get the photos for these, I uh, I actually have I'll, I'll I'll attach branches that I'll select to the bird feeders, and then the birds land on those branches and then work their way into the feeders. And, um, it makes for much better photos than just having a picture of the birds sitting on the you know plastic or metal bird feeder when you have them on this nice branch. Um, and so this particular branch, I, my friend was Dan was going up to the UP, and I said, hey, if you see some good branches with lichens on them, grab a couple for me so I can use it for photos. And he did. He brought me back the, this neat little twisty branch, and so I uh, got out the, the drill and drilled it to the, the feeder, and a few days later, this guy came by. And honestly, the, the branch was not quite as ready brown as I rendered it. I pushed those tones into the warmer tones so they'd play off the background better. And so I brought in some of those burnt siennas and chrome orange. And, uh, and for the shadow areas, I brought in some alizarin crimson and some dioxazine purple. And those ended up, the purples played well with the background and then the, those, you know, cooler reds worked well with the uh, red on the red pole's head and it set it apart from the background, I thought. Um, and that, that, that addition of color, I thought, made it a little bit more playful than it would have been if I um, had gone the opposite extreme and just stripped the palette down to a handful of colors which can be a really successful way to work, but it isn't really what I wanted to do in this particular painting. As I did the painting, I had in mind that as I got to the end, I would use a toothbrush and a paintbrush to spatter white paint onto this to make it look like a snowy scene. And as I got toward the end, after putting all that detail in, I started thinking, am I going to throw paint over a perfectly good painting and possibly ruin it? And started to have second thoughts. And I put it away for the night and decided I'd think about it and decide what to do the next morning. And when I got up, I looked at the painting and said, well, the only reason I'm not going to spatter paint over this is because I'm afraid I'm going to ruin it. And that's not really a very good reason to, uh, to, to not do it. You can't be afraid. So I, I committed myself and decided, yes, it needed these snowflakes to make it look like a good scene. Um, so I mixed up some uh, opaque whites and uh, then put the, planned on putting those on the painting instead of just spattering them random on the painting I did cut out a frisket um, out of paper so I would spare certain areas of the painting of the paint so I cut this shape out that you're seeing now and then I spattered the whole background area and then I peeled parts of it off so some things in the further in the background would have more snow covering them than the ones in the foreground. So I did it in a couple of passes. So in the end here you see that I was only sparing the bird and, uh, and spattering it over the rest of it so you'd have your attention really on the, the bird. And then in the end I took out a, a really sharp 10 aught brush and put in very specifically placed <laughs> snowflakes where I thought they'd work well with the composition. And then I, I said it was done. So it was, it was worth waiting to put those snowflakes on. Um, well, thanks for watching. If you get a chance, have a peek at the blog or leave a comment. Have a great one.